yearling sales is the most important uh, event of the calendar year to anyone who wants to buy bloodstock. Some of the most successful buyers are here at the national yearling sales. But the most successful buyer of uh, a yearling last year was none other than Gary Alexander. He has an opportunity to repeat history tomorrow at Turfenty. Pierre Jordan, 10 years to the day, goes to win the South African Triple Crown, which is the absolute peach in the racing calendar. Now, people don't understand that Horse Chestnut, exactly on the 24th day of April last year, won this race. Pierre Jordan goes to have a go. Gary, you guys must be absolutely excited and nervous and every emotion that can go through your bodies. Yeah, it's exciting times for the uh, Gary Alexander racing team. Uh, we've got a beautiful horse on our hands and uh, it would be great to pull it off. It'll be great for the people and for the public of racing. Racing needs something exciting and to bring the crowds back to Turf 15, that would be great. You guys have done your very best to promote this horse into the people's champion and make him something that uh, racing can be proud of. Well, you've got, I think you've got a tool, so go ahead and market it. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he is a good horse. People want to see champions. You know, I remember the days of Sea Cottage, uh, even Horse Chestnut. I mean, they used to pull the crowds, and it was great. I mean, when he had his final uh, uh, day at uh, Gosforth Park, I'll never forget that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that uh, haven't forgotten Horse Chestnut. Ten years to the day, Horse Chestnut ended up winning the derby by about 12 lengths. You guys go in, I don't think you've got the aspiration to win about 12 lengths but to win it the form lines are very similar between the two horses yes uh, James I think uh, you know I know uh, horse chestnut I think in those days the first leg was running Cape Town if I'm not mistaken so I think it's been, been a little bit tougher on on this horse because the races have been a lot closer for him uh, a month apart from a mile to an 18 to a 2 forward stretching it and he's a, he's a horse that's been growing on me at the same time so in that aspect it hasn't been easy but he's such a beautiful horse and and to train him he's been easy you know he's just whatever I've asked him he's just given me uh, he hasn't been pushed for anything he's just improved with every race that I've given him so even after the classic he'd come on like two lengths after that race which was nice you know he'd just come out of that race like he'd never had the run and he's actually just at his best right now it's very interesting that you bought this horse cheaply at the ready to run sale. Everyone had an opportunity to watch him gallop and everyone had an opportunity to buy him. So it shows you this business is not a matter of being able to spend the big money. You've got to actually have the insight. I think you've got to have an R4 horse and to buy, an, uh, to buy a nice individual. You know, at the time he was, he was a bit, he was a little bit underground. He just maybe a bit early for the sale for him because he was at an awkward stage. Um, but I like buying horses like that's going to grow on me and uh, it's the same with Imperius too. I mean she was a top filly, she won the JMB Met but only paid 60000 for her and she wasn't a flashy looking horse although she grew into a beautiful mare. So if you've got that eye and you can sort of push forward where a horse is going to be when he's a three or four year old, uh, I think then you're going to buy a nice individual. What are your deep down feelings about tomorrow? No, I think he's going to get the trip, James. I'm not. Uh, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried about the pace. Um, the, to me, the, the quicker they go, he's won his best races with the quick pace, um, and I, I think he'll get the trip. So, and if they go slow, we'll have to just uh, bide our time. They might play into our hands as well. So. It's up to Derek now, you know, I've done my bit. The source is well, he's, uh, he's, I couldn't get him an inch better than what he is. And it's up to Derek to read the pace and to where he wants to slot him in. Your family's been involved in this industry as long as you've been alive. Your father was a great jockey, Duncan Alexander. He was a doyen of perfectionists in this business. He was the most beautiful rider and he had the best kit, I think, of any man that's ever had kit on a race, racehorse. I was a true professional. Um, and he was a crack lightweight in his day. You know, going back in those days, it was hard to get the Oaks and the Derby rides because those trainers wouldn't put you on with dead weight. You know, it would have been a sin to them. So, at, but at his riding weight and that he, he won, I mean, he won two JMB Mets, two Summers, two Gold Cups and five merchants or six merchants. And, uh, you know, he's just told me one thing, have patience in this game. You've had patience. Have you got uh, a lot of orders for the sale? Because uh, certainly Pierre Jordan has got to have helped. Yes, I've got my staunch clients. You know, they've told me to go ahead and buy a couple. And, uh, you know, we're always on the market. If somebody wants to approach us and that, we'll, we'll always look for a nice horse for them. Gary Alexander 
is uh, one of the best teams in the racing business and tomorrow is there Normandy. They are going to go and win the South African Derby and be the first, first horse since Horse Chestnut to do such a feat. If you need to look him up, you'll be here at the sales.